Good day to you online friends. I am Joshua Spencer. As you know, recently I have been featuring um, one of my books each month. And this month, November, I intend to feature my book, Contemporary Issues, Science, Africa, and More. So my intention right now is to read a little portion of my book, Contemporary Issues, Science, Africa, and More, and hoping, with the hope that you will be interested in getting a copy of this book. This book um, can be used um, for various reasons. It can be used as a science textbook. It can also be used as a language textbook. Um, there are actually questions based after each, um, at the end of each chapter, uh, very, uh, you know, applying the Bloom's taxonomy, uh, you know, that's knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. So there are high-level questions that involve uh, a lot of thinking and deep thought and, uh, and so on. So uh, the book is Contemporary Issues, Science Africa and More. As I said, it has a lot of science information in there, but it can also be used as an English book. Um, so um, I hope you'll be interested. So today I'm going to share uh, parts of Chapter 2. From my book with you and 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 I will be showing the video over and over for every day of uh, for the month of November so what is genetic engineering genetic engineering is the manipulation of a living organisms genes by the use of technolo technological interventions in so doing the genetic engineering scientists use the technology to change the genetic expression, nature and makeup of the living organism. Note that this living organism can be an animal, including human beings or a plant. This manipulation of the genes of the organisms leads to the, to the creation of an organism with a desired or needed trait or traits and the removal of the unwanted ones. Put another way, genetic engineering is a structured group of technologies employed to change the genetic makeup of cells and to transfer genes across living organisms, plants and animals, including human beings, irrespective of their species. That is to say, genes can be transferred from, say, a cow to a goat, and so on, to have a desired outcome or trait. It is important for you, my reader, to, to note that clowning, including human clowning, already discussed in the first chapter of this book, is a component of genetic engineering. So now that I have established with you, my reader, uh, what is genetic engineering, I'll be sharing another portion of chapter 2, still on chapter 2, and page 31 uh, with you. And some arguments that proponents of genetic engineering may offer. There are possibly several arguments that can or may be put forth in support of genetic engineering. The first argument that one could possibly make for genetic engineering is that it creates new avenues for the rapid, rapid development of crucial medicine and for providing human beings with a more enhanced and beneficial life and lifestyle. As the technology of genetic engineering improves and proliferates, it lends itself to deeper knowledge and skills in the handling and treatment of diseases and provides a fuller understanding of the molecular basis of health in relations to the roles of genes or their absence thereof. Genetic engineering is the savior the world has been waiting for. Its proponents may postulate in this regard. Secondly, its proponents may further argue that with the reservoir and inundation of information available to experts on genes and their roles in the cause of diseases or the suppressing of them, 
derived through the knowledge imbibed via the Human Genome Project referenced above, the sky is the only limit in terms of the quality benefit mankind, animals and plants may attain from the biotechnology of genetic engineering. They may also point out that genetic engineering will lead to faster care, diagnosis and treatments for all, earlier diagnosis and prognosis, greater numbers of people benefiting and fewer side effects in taking care of patients. There are additional benefits to be derived from genetic engineering, its supporters may show. A possible and probable point that may be made in its support is that in cases where certain adult individuals have the propensity to pass on the gene for diseases such as cancer to their offspring, this could be quickly and easily prevented. The gene responsible for such an undesirable phenomenon could be easily isolated and destroyed through the biotechnology of genetic engineering. This lends to healthier children, which in the long run leads to a healthier society. This in turn promotes the creation of a more productive economy with a more mentally and physically well-endowed classes of individuals. Individuals may also be able to benefit from the technology to the extent that it may be able to eradicate certain addictions such as smoking and so on as a result as well. The supporters of genetic engineering may possibly demonstrate other benefits from the scientific innovation of the technology. The argument could be made that some living organisms manufacture compounds and have inherent values that are of a therapeutic nature, for example. It is a known scientific fact that the majority of antibiotics available to our medical practitioners are made from microbes. And there are several types of medicines available of which plants are their original sources. With genetic engineering and its continued development, not only will the supply of these needed products be available, but its output would be significantly strengthened and more likely made more effective. Among some of the benefits that could arise from these plants are cures for diseases that have, to date, evaded the available medical treatments, may be the argument. There are still other possible positive points to make for supporting the technology. One that may possibly be introduced in such a discussion by its proponents is its use in the area of gene therapy. Gene therapy utilizes genes to treat diseases. So, instead of, say, giving regular doses of injection to treat a disease, gene therapy can be used to provide a replacement gene that will give the required outcome or simply isolate the defective gene, etc. Some may even argue that it may be possible to use gene therapy to eliminate or prevent diseases such as cancer. Genetic engineering may be said to be a positive phenomenon in that, in addition to the above, it is possibly useful in situations such as in the case of patients in need of organ transplants, among other uses. Genetic engineering is not only harmless, but an imperative and useful, useful technology. Some may argue, may argue vociferously. The point may be made that at the rate at which the Earth's population is, is expanding, traditional agriculture may not be able to meet the global demand. With genetic engineering, with its component procedures of genetically modifying crops, not only would food production be enhanced quantitatively, <clears throat> sorry, but it will do so qualitatively and nutritionally as well. Genetic engineering also offers the opportunity to create crops through gene manipulations that will result in plants that are immune to pests and viruses and as a consequence will need little if any pesticides and herbicides. As unlike the traditional crops, 
Genetically modified crops will need little or no pesticides and herbicides. This serves as a boost to our environment and to protect it. In addition, those supporting the technology may argue that many of the applications that are currently applied through the biotechnology to our crops are not new, that they are and were already practiced in the past. Genetic engineering simply enhances and accelerates the conventional processes already been practiced for ages may be the argument. It may possibly be queried, then why should this technology be prevented? Finally, there may be support for the technology as it helps in the preservation of crops while being transferred from field to market. The technology allegedly can be used to prevent certain crops from getting soft or spoiled through long, rugged transportation from points X through B, for instance. With the current technology, the geneticist may be able to effect certain modification of the crops, genes to create these desired results. It, accordingly, would be desirable as it offers great economic benefits to farmers and directly to the economy as a whole. So there I just looked at, at how um, some of the arguments that proponents for genetic um, engineering may proffer. And now I am going to look at, on page uh, 33, of contemporary issues, Science Africa and more, um, we're going to look at um, arguments that opponents of genetic engineering may proffer. So these are arguments that, and at the back of each chapter, as I said, at the end of each chapter, there, is, there are questions. And, and this is why this textbook, this book could be used as a textbook in high schools and even um, in community colleges. So I'll begin, I'll resume, I should say. Some arguments that opponents of genetic engineering may proffer. There are several arguments that opponents of genetic engineering may present to demonstrate its harmful effects and undesirability. Firstly, the point may be made that genetic engineering will be used, especially in capitalist-oriented economies, chiefly and above everything else, to create wealth at all costs. In this stead, factors such as the health of the environment, ecosystems, animals and plants will be insignificant and secondary to everything else. As a consequence, these thinkers may argue that it is not only important that the technology be stopped immediately before it's too late, but it is imperative that it be eradicated. Some may argue as well that the methodology involved in modifying plant genes will inevitably lead to the degradation not only of the environment, but the specific plant themselves. To effect the genetic, the genetic modification in plants, beads of gold are shot from the barrel of gun at approximately 1,000 miles per hour. It leaves these plants with a number of tissues of the plants targeted damaged. Accordingly, only a few survived the torture of assault of gold beads. Just a tiny fraction of the plants will survive and display the required traits being attempted to be transmitted. Another possible concern by the opponents is that the rapid proliferation of genetic modified plants, especially in North America and Europe, poses a great and dire threat to the natural ecosystem and may consequently result in serious calamity in the future. The extent of which Homo sapiens, some may say Homo sapiens, may not be able to fix. And even if they could, it probably might be too late then. There are also possible concerns by the opponents of the technology that plants that have been modified to be pest and virus resistant may or could possibly have negative and harmful effects on humans. Maybe the thought could possibly be that these 